So next up we have Nishan Joshi, who is the SDE for Hyperswitch, which is an open source payment switch designed to enhance the speed, reliability, and affordability of payments. So let us welcome him with a huge round of applause as we get into this enlightening discussion on um, Hyperswitch. Hello everyone, I'm Nishan. Uh, I work as a software developer at JustPay and I'm here uh, to talk a little bit about open payment system. But before getting into that, uh, let's talk about a few of... Uh, before getting into it, let's talk about the few things that I saw uh, like while attending the FOSS yesterday and today. So it's like overall, uh, I see a lot of value being generated around like people making great projects, a uh, lot of value being generated, but the problem is uh, it's not being captured very effectively. Let's say ki you are building some kind of software, but you want to add some kind of payments uh, interface to it. It's a bit of a development effort. For like, like to put it simply, you are working on something software. Just to add a small payments layer on it, you need to uh, learn a little bit about how payments work, the domain knowledge part of it. Then. <coughs> Then there is also the dev effort that is involved into making the payment, uh, like making the interface and integrating it in your software. Like there are a lot of nuances, and why should why should there be so many nuances? So, like uh, in 2023, uh, using payments shouldn't be so hard for a developer. So, uh, in the following slides, I'm going to uh, talk about a few problems that we currently face in the payments ecosystem and uh, how we try to solve it uh, using uh, some of the approaches that we went with uh, Hyperswitch. So moving on, firstly, it's about unification. So like, as we know, worldwide, there are a lot of payment methods. There is like uh, Apple Pay, PayPal, Google Pay, whatnot. There are a lot of payment methods. And uh, let's say if you want to support your product for a specific demographic, uh, you need to have all the payment methods that uh, they need, which will which could be tiresome. Not only that, let's say ki if you're using some kind of payment processor, uh, there will be difficulties in cases where, uh, no, they might not uh, support certain payment methods. Like maybe, let's say ki if you're using something, and what if it doesn't support UPI? It would be very difficult to use in India, right? Because we heavily rely on India. Uh, heavily rely, uh, rely on UPI in India. So. This is one problem. Uh, moving on, there is another problem that uh, we noticed is ki the performance. Uh, okay, So let's say ki we are talking about global payments. Uh, if you are trying to do payments across countries, not only will you be incurring the overall network traffic between the regions, but there could be also layers between them, right? It's, uh, to put it simply, uh, if you're making payment from one bank in one country to a different bank in different country, they wouldn't directly support it. You might need to use some kind of intermediate layer to support it, which itself incurs some kind of performance uh, penalty and uh, a little bit of latency uh, regardless. Next, uh, it's affordability. So uh, as I'm talking about the layers, not only do, do they introduce uh, performance uh, latency, but they also introduce a little bit of cost along the way. Like in every layer that is there in between the pay, uh, uh, the money that is transferred from one party to another, it will incur a little bit of cost here and there, which uh, like doesn't need to be the case all the time. But because of simplicity, that's what it is. So let's see. So this is overall the summary of how uh, we are trying to look at the problems that we currently face in the payments ecosystem and how we uh, aim to solve it. So uh, firstly, you can, my, I feel, uh, and my team as well, ki this can be solved really effectively using open source systems. Uh, not only because of the nature, but also because of the active development community. It's, uh, so as I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of payment methods, a lot of payment processors, banks, whatnot. And people, uh, people in some countries vi will have a better context around it than people in others. So why can't we just make it open and let developers decide and developers help in building a system that is accessible and available to everyone. So that's what we are trying to aim for. 
<laughs> and this is how we try to solve it. So, firstly, it's about uh, reducing the dependency on a single processor. And significant dev effort, as I mentioned. Because uh, let's say ki, uh, you, should, you should not waste your time developing uh, something in payments domain if you are building something really great. You know, that should be taken care of already. So, you know, just uh, like the ideology is just leave that part to us and you just focus on developing whatever you are building. Uh, moving forward, uh, talking about the overall performance and uh, scalability aspects of the project. Um, okay. So, uh, regarding the performance aspects, we uh, went with Rust as it's uh, quite lightweight and uh, not very memory hog. So, we were able to achieve a really good uh, and optimized uh, product at the end. The application takes hardly any memory and is not only able to support payments at a speed of just 30 ms, but also at scale. So, uh, not only that, we also try to uh, use something like a uh, in interfacing layer in between the application and database to have a more predictable latency, uh, which helps not only in keeping the payments uh, latency more predictable, but also helping in uh, making the application scale throughout the world. And the neat part, ki we have open sourced nearly all of it. The backend is already open source for more than 10 months. We are also in the process and have open source uh, the deployment of how you can deploy HyperSwitch on your own and uh, use it in your own application. We, like, we provide one-click deployments, Kubernetes, Helm charts, and more. Moving forward, uh, so, uh, as I'm saying, it's a payments uh, software. So shouldn't we have some kind of observability in here? Because you know payments are quite critical. And uh, to actually help us get better look at how the system is working internally, we relied heavily on uh, open telemetry, Prometheus, and uh, in, like, basically Grafana stack to help us uh, log better, get metrics, and much more insights into how the system is internally working. And, this is also open source. You can just go to our repo and check it out. Moving forward, uh, as I was mentioning earlier about open sourcing, not only are we open sourcing the, uh, not only is the backend open source, but we are also open sourcing the merchant facing dashboard, the dashboards that provides you insights and observability, and much more. Uh, plus, and uh, towards uh, reducing the dev efforts, Let's say if you want to use this application with your web app, it's uh, really difficult these days to make a web platform that is extremely stable and secure uh, in order to pass the uh, sensitive payment information. That's why we are also open sourcing the uh, web checkout, which, is, uh, which internally has a very secure system which sends the uh, sensitive card details or other sensitive details to the uh, main application without any kind of compromise and join the moment. It's, uh, so to put it simply, it's not about contribution, it's about usage. As uh, payments in general is a very small field and I feel it's not much uh, well like, uh, adopted in the open source community because it's, come on, it's payments. But I feel that should change because payments in general shouldn't be that complex. And if more people contribute in the payments domain, it would be really, <laughs> great and it would make the system even more robust without even having proprietary ship and any kind of internal hidden behaviors. Uh, this was overall our roadmap and uh, uh, we open sourced the software 10 months ago and we nearly uh, reached about 5k stars in just 10 months. Uh, and there are a lot more things going on. We also pa uh, participated in the Hacktoberfest where we got a uh, uh, ton of contributions and not just that we also ranked five in the payments in uh, pay in the payments uh, section in github so uh, i would just ask you guys to uh, use uh, like try out hyperswitch tell us what do you think join our community and uh, uh, if you if you guys have any questions i am uh, like i'm open to
Any questions? Thank you. Yeah. Oh, oh, so uh, replacing is quite difficult, as we know. It's a quite a proprietary infrastructure. What we aim to do is uh, build an abstraction layer over it. So the main project, what it has is, it has a lot of abstra uh, like abstractions built into it. So you could just integrate whatever, let's say your bank, maybe your payment processor into it. So it will just give you a unified interface uh, to talk to, rather than understanding each of them uh, by itself and integrating them on, on their own. Like, this just reduces the dev efforts and the chance of failures in multiple places by, by just uh, isolating it to one place. Any other questions, anyone? Is it, is it similar to, hello? Yeah, is it similar to something that Aiden does? Because I think Aiden also works in a similar way. Aiden, right? Yeah. So uh, you, in one way it is, in one way it is not. It's, uh, so this is not a payment processor, rather a payment orchestrator. So, uh, so how it differs is, as ADN processes the payments, we just sit on top of uh, uh, like uh, similar processes like ADN, Stripe, and many others, and unify their API into one. This, this just provides you with a unifi uh, unified interface and a, a way to fall back to other uh, processes in case of any failures in their system. Just provides you a little bit of uh, robustness under the hood. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? I know a lot of uh, JSPay projects are written in Haskell. Any reason why you chose Rust for this particular? Oh, uh, yeah, that's okay. a great question. So as I was mentioning in the third or fourth slide, uh, we were planning to make this application uh, more lightweight and scalable. And as you know, Haskell definitely is scalable. But because of having a garbage collected uh, well, because of having a garbage collected runtime, uh, it becomes uh, heavy uh, in the memory side of things, whereas this isn't. So uh, just to give you a glimpse, uh, this hardly takes uh, around 300 MBs max for a small pod to run, and it can still handle a lot of traffic. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you had mentioned that you were using a distributed key value store generally for yeah. So is that a like is it written in a pluggable manner that you use your own distributed key, KV or do you recommend one like what what is it used for? Which oh yes. One do you use? Uh, so currently like we do have a plug pluggable interface for it, but uh, if you uh, check the code right now, we have heavily integrated it with Redis to like as it's open source and it's extremely robust, providing us with uh, 99.59s of uh, reliability. Uh, we haven't. Uh, checked any other KV stores yet, but definitely something uh, to dis uh, look into. Yeah, thanks. Any other questions? Any other questions? Oh. Thank you so much, Nishant, for sharing insights on HyperSwitch.